Well, I'll admit, Jack has a lot of talent. But there is such a thing as loyalty, devotion, a spark of humanity. What is this? What's the matter? You're supposed to introduce me, that's all. Introduce yourself. <laughs> well, the old radio gang, the only one missing was Mary. Jack begged her to come on, but all those cameras made her nervous. Really? I thought she just didn't dig working for scale. <laughs> well, that too. Anyway, one time Jack tricked her. While the show was going on, he called her at home. Mary, who were you just talking to? Nobody. I told you a thousand times, for two dollars more, we can have a private line. <laughs> All right, I'll think about it. Now, aren't you sorry you're not on my show? I don't know. I'm not watching it. <laughs> what? Mary, I know you're too nervous to be on the show, but... What excuse have you got for, for not watching it? Because you're too sneaky. Now, what is that supposed to mean? It means that if you knew I was watching the show, you'd have hidden the camera in this room and I would be one of your guests. Oh, <laughs> how can you say that? How about the last time you asked me to be on your show? You sent me a painting of Betsy Ross making the American flag. So what? That was a gift. <laughs> What are you, what are you laughing at? Some gift. Betsy had a camera hidden under the flag. <laughs> well, it looks like Jack had the last laugh. Until he got home. <laughs> now, what about Phil Harris? Oh, Philzy came on one show and it was quite a reunion until he started to sing That's What I Like About the South. Jack ran out and told him he couldn't sing that song. It made no sense. Phil insisted that it did. Jack told him to continue, he'd prove that it didn't. Here come old Bob with all the news. Got the box back, coat and the button shoes. But he's all caught up in them union dues. That's what I like about the South. Here come old Rob. Boy, down the street. what happened Can't to Bob? See them scum and feet. He would rather sleep than eat. And that's what I like about the South. Tell him what place called do what did he? Well, it ain't no town, it ain't no city. It's awful small, but awful pretty will do. What did he? Hold it! Hold it! been waiting for. That's the one I've been waiting That's for. That's the one he's been waiting for. That's the one. Do what did he? That, okay, fellas, bring it in. Bring what in? Bring this map in. Bring it in. I want to prove something. Now, Phil, here is the latest map of the United States. Look at it. I want you to show me one place on this map where it says, do what did he? That's what, I can see Walla Walla, Muskegon, Astabula, Waxahachie, but where in the name of Aristotle Onassis is Dua Diddy? Well, I just told you. You told me what? Here's what I told you. I said, did I tell you about the place called Dua Diddy? It ain't no town. It ain't no city. Oh. It's awfully small, but oh, so pretty. <laughs> Don't describe it! Don't describe it! Is Where is it? What is it? Is it a real place? Look, what do you... Is what, it? What are you talking about? Do you think I'm nuts? When I'm telling you stuff like this, it's not a fig leaf of my imagination. That's figma! Oh, <laughs> Listen, I don't care. I want you to answer me one thing. Why? If Dua Diddy ain't no town and ain't no city, yeah. what is it? Is it a hamlet? Is it a village? Is it a gas station? <laughs> is it a washing machine? <laughs> what? I defy you to answer me. You know, I love you when you get mad. You know the blood's almost up to your chin. <laughs> One question. Where is Dua Diddy? Jackson, I can't tell you. Why not? Then Alice will know where I've been for the last four months. <laughs>
Jack had a theory about the violin. He f and that was his best. <laughs> Imagine if he wasn't trying. Let's not overdo this. I've been spoiled by Henny Youngman. But you know, Jack really did love the violin. He joked about the one he played. It was a Strad. Joe Strad. <laughs> or he'd say his great-grandfather handed it down to his grandfather, and his grandfather handed it down to his father, and his father sold it to him. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a very expensive instrument. I don't think Jack got a bigger charge out of anything he did than those benefit concerts he did in his later years with the Philharmonic orchestras all over the country. He actually loved playing with the Ormandys and the Stokowskis, and he raised millions. Yeah, the cheap $5 seats were up front. <laughs> to sit in the back row, you paid $100. <laughs> and for $200, you didn't have to come at all. When he played with the Israeli Philharmonic, they say that Moishe Diane took the patch off his eye and put it over his ear. <laughs> well, his great friend Isaac Stern, the great concert artist, once said, when Jack Benny walks out in white tie and tails in front of those 90 musicians, he looks like the world's greatest violinist. It's a shame that he has to play. <laughs> Funny line, huh? From time to time, Jack liked to do movie takeoffs. So when The Graduate was a big smash, he had to do his version of it. Naturally, Jack played the Dustin Hoffman part, and he looked very carefully to find just the right person for the Ann Bancroft role of Mrs. Robinson, the one who seduces Benjamin when he comes home from college. Me, don't you? Yes, Mrs. Robinson. Well, then why are you ignoring me like this? I'm, I'm thinking about my future. So am I. <laughs> but I'm thinking about five, ten years from now. I'm thinking about tonight. <laughs> cigarette. No. No, thank you. Don't you smoke? No. Don't you drink? No. Well, I'm <laughs> Why are you fighting me? Don't you think I'm attractive? Well. Don't you think I'm beautiful? No, Mr. Uh, do you think I'm too aggressive? Now, look, Mrs. Robinson, I just got home from school. I... Miss, Mrs. Robinson, you... please, I want you to stay away from me. Now, please. <laughs> look, I, I've got to think of... Look, Mrs. Robinson, now, please. Mrs. Robinson, now stay away from me. Look at Mrs. Robinson, where is all of this leading to? To the Sycamore Hotel at Fifth and Grand. Robinson! Jack was my best friend, but I'm not sure. But I think Dustin Hoffman did it a little better. Phyllis Diller, Ann Bancroft. A toss-up. <laughs> that was The Graduate. In another of uh, his shows, Jack did just the reverse. He played a wolf. Jack a wolf? I didn't know he was in Little Red Riding Hood. <laughs> no, no, no. You see, I'm talking about a whole different Jack. Back in the days when he was a dashing Hollywood heartthrob. But Jack, none of us ever knew. Including Mary. <laughs> that was when Lucille Ball was getting her first chance as a Goldwyn girl. And one day, Jack met her on the movie set. <laughs> 